The more I watch the Seattle Seahawks team play football, the more convinced I am that they are actually not that good. And this game last night is just becoming all the proof that you need at this point. Terrible situational football, bad tackling, guys don't look like they want it. And DK Metcalf, let's start with him. Another game with just weird body language, talking crap to the offensive coordinator on the headset, and look at him, he's slouching in his seat. Right off the bat, this is in like the first quarter, already having issues. And here we go. Here's some lip reading for you guys. And this is, I am almost 100% sure this is exactly what he says here. He's getting on the headset with the offensive coordinator. And watch what he says right here. I'm almost 100% sure this is it. This is lip reading mostly from Twitter. So maybe you want to take it with a grain of salt. But this is what it looks like he says. It says, hey, Grub, can we please, can we please throw it past the effing sticks? Hey, Grub. Can we please, can we please throw it past dicks? That's what it looks like he's saying to me, which is ironic because that's exactly what they did multiple times in this game. And he didn't even show that much effort on these plays. Here we go. DK is going to get a ball past the sticks, a little bit of a seam route here. Gino's going to throw it downfield. It's a little bit underthrown and DK doesn't even go back to the ball. He just lets it go to him. This is like a pouty. Like, I'm just going to let the ball come to me. My quarterback under through the route. So I'm just not even going to go for it. And it frustrates me because, dude, DK, <laughs> he, he's trying to play like this finesse style game. And yeah, you're open. If the ball's thrown further downfield, that's probably a touchdown. I don't want to take that away from him. But you're also one of the biggest dudes on the field. I would argue there's not a single matchup that any corner or safety has against DK that he can't beat one-on-one. -on -one. And if there's a jump ball situation, a 50-50 ball, and a chance where he can essentially block guys out, get to the ball first, jump higher than everybody, he's too strong to be held down. Why are you just letting a ball come to you like this? That's unacceptable. You can't go to the sideline and complain to your offensive coordinator that you're not getting enough touches beyond the sticks and show effort like this. That crap's unacceptable. If he comes back to that ball, that's probably a catch. Yes, Gino didn't play a great game last night. Yes, Gino underthrew that ball. But you still have a chance to make a play on it. we got to have better effort than that. But now let's move on to the awful defense. Because when the season started week one, I thought this was one of the best tackling teams in the NFL. Every guy that was in the open field, first guy on the ball was making the play. None of that was happening last night. And I don't really care about the injuries. At some point, you're an NFL player, you're an NFL football team, you got to be able to make plays. And this is a play that Debo Samuel, he's going to get open on a route, but the safety's coming downhill fast. This, sh this ball shouldn't have even been caught. And somehow he overruns him, and it's a touchdown. <laughs> it's like, watch this other angle. Look, I get it. Debo was open, but this is a ball. It's just a floater out in the open field. The safety's coming in fast. It's a good read. He's in a vulnerable position. This is a play. I don't even know how that ball's getting caught. He should be getting absolutely drilled on contact with this catch, but he overruns him. And now it's open field run with Debo Samuel, and that's a touchdown. I can't wait for the all 22 to come out because I don't get how you overrun this. Maybe it's because Debo came back to the ball a little bit. I mean, you're in the best possible position as a safety to make this play. And for you to miss that, it's just unacceptable. Or how about Brock Purdy running around like prime Russell Wilson last night? This was happening all game, all game. For some reason, Brock Purdy just cannot be tackled. And this has gone for basically every quarterback that the Seahawks have faced. Chances to make tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Chances to make a play and force a fourth down or even getting a sack. And it doesn't matter who the quarterback is. Can't seem to make an open field tackle on their quarterback. Prime example, you're on third and two. They're backed up to like their 12 yard line. You have a chance to force a fourth down, make them punt. You're going to have good field position. But instead, Brock Purdy is going to scramble out of the pocket and you're going to have a chance to get a tackle on him right here. You got a chance to make a play. If you can get Brock Purdy on the ground right here, they are punting. You have good field position. You have a chance to at least get a field goal out of this. But no, Brock Purdy breaks the tackle, gets the first down, and they're keeping the drive moving. But these are the plays I'm talking about. It seems so small in the moment, but this is the game. And I want to give Brock Purdy credit. I think he's a good athlete. But is he good enough for him to be doing crap like this all game? That We got to make that play. Brock Purdy's not, um, he's not Cam Newton. Here we go again. Third and four. Force the fourth down. You're going to have a chance to get a sack for a huge, huge loss here. And we're going to come unblocked off the edge. 
untouched free shot at the quarterback right here. I mean, that's as free as it gets. Number two, wide open free shot untouched to the quarterback. And we can't make a play on it. I mean, we're just getting buckled back here. This is embarrassing. He's back. This is out of field goal range. If they if they make a tackle back here and they get this sack, you're taking points off the board for him. But he makes it out. He throws it away. And now instead of a sack for like a 15-yard loss, now it's an incomplete pass and they're kicking a field goal. That costs you points. How about the run game from Jordan Mason? Uh, San Francisco 49ers, if, if Mason did not get injured and hurt his shoulder, he might have rushed for 150 or 200 yards in this game. Nobody could tackle him. The blocking was great for the Niners. You got to give him credit, but he makes it up to the sticks and you got two guys on the ball. Neither of them can make a tackle. And now we got extra yards and he's going into field goal range. It's just, it's just so frustrating. This team looks like they're not, they're not physical. Like they're getting out physical. And that's even tougher to watch because if you can't stop the run when you know it's coming, especially, and we'll get to that later, how are you going to beat anybody? And watch this play right here. Look at how piss poor this effort is by number 17. Brock Purdy completes yet another pass to George Kittle, who was cooking him last night. George Kittle's a big dude. You need to get on this guy as quick as you can. Big, strong, tough, physical, tight end. And watch number 17. Watch this effort. Number 17 is just going to jog over to George Kittle, give him a little hug, not even really. Like, what is this effort? It's, that's like, oh, someone also make the tackle for me. And he gets extra yards out of it. You're the first guy on the ball. If you're the first guy on the ball, you got to be way more. What is that? What is that? Am I crazy? Am I nitpicking here? Or does that look like bad effort? Right? Maybe I'm wrong. But you guys tell me, what does this look like to you? Does that does that look like good, hard notes, physical football? <laughs> I mean, these guys know they're on camera, right? Th this is all on tape. You can't hide this crap. And then the icing on the cake. You actually have a chance to maybe put a special drive together at the end of the game. You got to get a stop. The Niners are back. I think they're on their 20-yard line. They need a first down to win the game. You have all three timeouts. I think just about everyone in the stadium knows there's like a 90, 95% chance that they're going to run this ball. And not only are they going to run this ball, but they're going to run this ball with their third string running back. And he's going to go untouched absolutely untouched for like 70 yards and give the blocking credit up front. But if you know a run is coming, right? If you know, hey, this is going to be a run. They're going to get us to burn our timeouts. And you're not only getting blocked that well up front, but your linebackers, your secondary, nobody even gets a hand on the guy. If you were playing two-hand touch, actually scratch that. If you were playing tag, <laughs> you were playing one-hand touch, this play still happens, and the only reason he didn't go in the end zone, which he should have, he should have just ran this in, Witherspoon didn't get to him. He just slid down. That's a touchdown. They just ran like an 81-yard touchdown on you in a situation where you where you basically 100% know they're running the football, and they ran it 81 yards down the field, essentially untouched. This isn't even stopped if it's flag football. <laughs> this is just embarrassing. And I left the Geno plays out. Geno didn't play well, but for God's sakes, it's his first bad game this year. All quarterbacks are going to have bad games. I'm going to let this one pass. Now, if he strings together a few bad games, maybe we'll start talking about a little bit. But geno has been one of the better quarterbacks this year, and I think he deserves a little bit of a pass in this game. This is just unacceptable, guys. And I'm not sure the Seahawks team is really as good as we thought they were. I hope I'm wrong on that. But what they've been putting on tape these last few games, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's injuries. I, at some point, you got to be able to play football. And if you're getting injured, it sucks. But that's not... That's no excuse to just to just not give a crap. I will be doing more breakdowns. Please consider subscribing so you guys don't miss those. If you enjoyed this video and if you enjoyed this style of content, there's tons more of it on my page. Go check it out. See if you like it. Leave a comment. I read every single comment that I get, no matter how many there are. I'm also going to be starting my own sports show called the Game Face Sports Show. Still working a little bit on that. We'll see what that looks like, but keep an eye out for it. Thank you, guys, and I will see you in my next video. Let's go.